The city of New Orleans. As Louisiana's largest metropolitan area, it is primarily known for its distinct French and Spanish architecture, Creole cuisine, and being the birthplace of jazz. The city is located on the banks of the Mississippi River and rests just south of Lake Pontchartrain. 49% of the historic township is below sea level, making drainage a major concern for the city's population. Because New Orleans is almost completely surrounded by water, in 1965, the Army Corps of Engineers built man-made levees to secure the city in case of a major storm or hurricane. The force of Mother Nature had tested the city over the years, but in 2005, the Big Easy caved under the storm surge of Hurricane Katrina. The Category 3 hurricane flooded 80% of the city and did more damage than any other natural disaster in U.S. history. Roughly $80 billion worth. In Louisiana, an estimated 204,000 homes were destroyed and 800,000 residents displaced. The storm left more than 100 million cubic yards of utter debris and devastation behind. That's enough debris to fill the Superdome in New Orleans 21 times. 10 years later, the city is still recovering. Efforts continue to rebuild communities like the Lower Ninth Ward, once thought lost to the storm. Organizations like the Make It Right Foundation, founded by actor Brad Pitt in 2007, helped to build environmentally friendly homes for families in need. In today's Math at Work webisode, we'll be delving into the mathematics of building a home, one that needs to be sustainable in a tricky landscape like New Orleans. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ty Pennington, and today we'll be looking at math and how it's used in building a home. Some of you are familiar with the work I've done on ABC's Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Now on that show, we provided home improvements for less fortunate families and community schools. Today, we're gonna do something very similar, but we'll also focus on how mathematics plays an intricate role for every team member involved in building a home. That includes architects, carpenters, engineers, electricians, and project management. I'm here in the Lower Ninth Ward, New Orleans, and I want to introduce you to two local students who are very passionate about math and their community. Come on out here, guys. This is Sarah and Rico. So, Sarah, what grade are you in? I'm in seventh grade, and I go to Stella Worley Middle School. Now, Rico, what about you? I'm in 10th grade, and I go to De La Salle High School. So, why are you guys so passionate about math? Because I like numbers, and I like to solve problems. Well, you know what? Solving problems, that never quits. You'll be doing that your entire life. So, today, I'm going to introduce you to two friends of mine who are also very passionate about the work they do. Mm -hmm. And working in two teams, you guys are going to solve some real life problems involved in building a sustainable home. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, let's take a look at how important math is when it comes to architecture and building. The first step is the design. Architects draft detailed plans indicating the structure's location, making sure the house's perimeter is set back from other surrounding homes. This house has three bedrooms, a kitchen, a living room, and two bathrooms. The size of each room is important. For instance, bedrooms must be at least 80 square feet. Next comes the foundation. This house is built on wooden pilings that support and protect the house in case of a major flood. The framing or bones of the building sits on top of the pilings. The size of the windows must be at least 1 12th the size of the room. Now builders install the floors and walls. Cabinets, doors, fixtures, and furniture complete the final touches turning this house design into a home. 